Hey everybody, welcome back. We're in mid-January here and we survived the frigid temperatures. So this past week we didn't get above freezing here in Kentucky. It was what I consider pretty darn cold. We got down to about two degrees, I think. So to me, that's cold. <laughs> I actually like the cold weather though. I'll take the cold weather over the hot summer weather any day, but that's just me. So we still have snow on the ground, obviously, but we're back into the mid forties here, temperature wise. So I'm not seeing any cleansing flights from the girls. I, I see a little bit of bee activity right there at those upper entrances, but the undertakers have definitely been working. And what I mean by that is the bees that have died inside the hives, it's not uncommon to see several dead bees. There's one flying. To see several dead bees at your hive's entrances this time of year. And they're just doing what nature does best, taking care of business inside the hive. You know, bees sometimes naturally die inside the hives and the worker bees will drop them off out front. Now, in the warmer weather, you don't see this as much because the worker bee will actually, the forager will actually take that dead bee and she will fly her out of the hive and some distance, some distance away. You know, typically I'll see them fly about maybe 15, 20 feet and I'll just observe her and she'll drop her out here in the field and then go back to the hive. But when it's really cold like this, well, not super cold. Again, we're in the mid forties, but the bees are still clustered at these temperatures. So when it's thirties or forties and they can carry out the dead bees, they tend to just drop them right there at the entrance rather than flying in this cold weather, which they don't enjoy doing. But man, these poor girls have needed a bathroom break and I think they're going to get it. If they didn't get it today, earlier today, I wasn't out here all day, but I think they'll get it in the next day or two because we're supposed to get up to mid fifties, close to even 60 degrees in January, which is unseasonably warm. But of course, this time of year, if you get temperatures in the fifties and sixties, guess what that comes with? That comes with rain. So it's going to be rainy, rainy forecast. So if you recall in the last video, there's two hives that I need to restock with some sugar that they were burning through the majority, if not all of their sugar brick. And so these two hives I'm going to get into and I just have standard old granulated sugar that I'm going to add to that inner shim and resupply them with some food because I don't know exactly how much is in the frame still. I suspect they're okay, but if the bees generally are up high in the colony into that emergency food, they could be running short on food inside the colony. So, and we obviously don't want that happening. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into these two hives and see how they're doing and refill that sugar. All right, let's have a look at this first one here. You see a little bit of condensation on this. And you can kind of see a little bit there too. I'll shake it off. All right. Which tells me they're probably up in here, which is annoying because I really don't want them in the inner cover in this shim. Okay, they're not in there terribly bad, so that's good. That gives me room to give them some sugar. And that's all I need. Now, I have the smoker lit, and if it was warmer, I would smoke them a little bit um, to try to encourage them to go back down in there. But I don't want to smoke them in the colder weather. 45 is still a little chilly because um, I don't want the I don't want to break up the cluster. And that's something you have to be careful about: is you don't want 
to um, break the cluster. So they've worked hard to <laughs> generate their heat and stay in that cluster. And if you smoke them in these colder temperatures, you risk, and I, I'm really trying not to get sugar to fall down in the colony there, even though some is, and that's okay. It'll probably pass right through and I'll take the uh, IPM board and just shake it off. But that's it. That's all. That's good enough for now. I don't want to dump sugar directly on the girls. So um, some of them have their heads poking through there. But yeah, when you see bees, a lot of bees up here at the top, it is an indication that they could be getting low on food stores inside the hive. And again, this could just be a bigger colony as well, which means more bees, more mouths to feed. But that right there will at least supply them with what they need. They'll be able to take that moisture from their breath that you saw was coming up. It, it'll actually form on the sides of the hive as well. They'll be able to take that water, mix it with that granulated sugar, and make a syrup that they'll be able to use and digest. So, and I will come back out here in just a few days and refill this if necessary. So they're gonna have plenty of food. I just have to make sure that I'm staying on top of this colony and that other colony because they've already gone through one round of the sugar brick. And in the meantime, what I may do is just make some white, uh, some granulated sugar, sugar brick without the pollen substitute in it, put that in another shim that I have back in the pole barn. And during one of these little warmer days when it's okay to smoke them and they're not gonna be clustered, I can smoke them to encourage them to go back down in the colony because I really don't wanna open these hives and shake all the bees out. You don't wanna be doing that in cold weather. So if we get close to 60, um, the bees don't need to be clustering in 60 degree weather. So I'll smoke them down in there and then I'll put a whole new fresh, large sugar brick on both of these two colonies. That's the plan anyway. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on these, but that right there will at least give them something in the meantime. And if need be it, I'll just keep coming out here and refilling you know, that, that little bit area that I can, you know, just refilling what the bees give me. So, but it's good to see that they're doing okay. Obviously, they made it through that frigid cold period just fine. Uh, I do not insulate my hives. Some beekeepers in this area choose to. I don't think it's necessary. And I, when I mean insulate, I mean wrap the hives in insulation, the sides. It is important to insulate the top because that is what keeps the moisture from accumulating on the inner cover on the ceiling potentially freezing, thawing out, and dripping ice cold water on the cluster, and that's what kills them. So if you have a thermal barrier on the top, their moisture will accumulate to the sides because the sides of the hive will be colder than the top of the hive, and of course, water likes to get condensed to a colder surface. So, and water on the side, inside of the hives on the sides is actually a good thing because bees need water during the winter time, so they're actually able to take that water and drink it or use it to convert the granulated sugar into syrup that they can feed on. So let's, uh, let's run over here and let's check out this next hive. All right, let's see how the next one's doing here. See if we got any moisture inside this one. Nope, that one's pretty dry. Let's see what we're looking at here. Yeah, they're they're a little irritated. A little more than the other one. Now they're they still technically have some. Uh, here, let me see if I can bring you in just a little bit closer here. So you can see them. So I don't see a lot of the defensive posturing, which is interesting because usually I do this time of year when they're clustered together. A lot of times they'll stick their butts up in the air and have their stingers out, but I'm not seeing that. So there's still a little bit of sugar in here. I don't <clears throat> suspect this one is as low on food stores inside the colony as the other one. 
I have no way of knowing that for sure, but just based on there's not as many bees up here as the other one. Not to mention they still have some sugar inside here. They've not gone through all of it. I'm still going to try to put a little sugar over here just so they have a little bit more where there's the space is. But it looks like they're doing really well. All right, let's go ahead and get that sugar on. Try not to drown the poor bees in sugar. If I can put a little bit over here, there we go. Kind of push them out of the way. Oh, that's working. And I really don't want sugar falling down in that, in that inner cover. <laughs> As I'm doing this, they are moving out of the way, so I'm not drowning any in sugar here. But I'm also being careful, like I said, I really don't want it to fall down inside that inner hole, so. Okay, well, I know that doesn't seem like a ton, but that's something for them to keep working with, so. But yeah, they look good. Looking good. And that's why you didn't see as much moisture inside this one, because there wasn't as many bees up top there, so. They didn't, uh, <laughs> they didn't like the cold or the light as, as much as the other one. The other one did, but I can't say I blame him, you know. Uh, but we sure don't want our bees to starve, that's for sure. And these co all these colonies, in theory, should be fine because I did properly weigh each one before we went into the winter time. But again, different colonies consume resources at different rates. And also depends on how many bees they overwinter as well. How many mouths are they feeding? So it's uh, it's one of those things where you, you try to you try your best to get your hives to the appropriate weight, but depending on environmental impacts, um, what the weather is doing, how early the winter begins, or the different weather conditions, bees can if they're unable to get out and forage late in the, in the summer, you know, they can blow through those food stores pretty quickly. And the fact that I run singles, I have to really be on top of this. Now, there should be plenty of food in a single deep for a colony. Cause some, some people have commented, you know, Josh, why don't you overwinter with a super on? And I certainly could do that. And there's many beekeepers that do. I personally don't. And because I don't, I just have to make sure that I stay on top of their food emergency food, and I need to make sure that each colony has proper weight on it heading into the winter time inside the deep. Because keep in mind in the winter time, there, there could be completely broodless periods where none of the 10 frames have any brood whatsoever. I've seen it happen. You got a nice laying queen in there and it's nothing but food stores. 10 frames of food is a lot of food for, for a small cluster, plenty of food. Um, or there may be just a fourth of a frame, one side of brood, a very small amount of brood because these winter bees are designed to last months through the winter time. Those fat bees that the queen started raising at the end of last year, those are the bees that are staying in this colony and surviving for months on end when typically a worker bee only lives about 45 days. So these bees live for months. And then they'll start to die off in the early spring when that queen starts ramping up and then it's a churn and burn game. So anyway, colony's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and take these two IPM boards out, shake any sugar that fell through because I use screen bottom boards. So that's also an advantage of having screen bottom boards is if something falls through, it goes through the screens and the IPM board. If I want to get it off, I can't. 
So any excess sugar that accidentally fell down in that inner cover would likely fall through into that IPM board and I can shake it off. So that way I'm not attracting any sort of ants or anything else because that is unpatrolled space by the bees, especially in the winter time when they're inside the hive and they're clustered. So yeah, so that's it. We know these other hives were doing good last time I checked, which was like, you know, less than a week ago. So I'm sure they have plenty of food. I've got some emergency food on these two hives now, and I will be monitoring them every few days just to see, you know, it's, it's super quick and easy to get in these. You saw how little time it took me to just put some granulated sugar and call it good. So I'll keep doing that, see how much they're taking down, make sure they have plenty of food. And that's it. So looks like we got some warmer weather on the way. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, a few more sugar bricks and just have those for spares. And if I can um, get those on top of the colonies without squashing or squishing or impacting the bees too much, I'll go ahead and do that. And if it's 60 degrees and they're not clustered, I'll just smoke them down and try to get them down in there. So that's it. Uh, so, you know, just a quick video today. And I think it's, it's you know, it's always nice seeing your bees get through those cold snaps because as beekeepers, we kind of hold our breath. Because it's just, you know, and, and the bees are used to this. Bees can handle cold better than we can, quite frankly. So, but it's, it's always nice when you open your hives like that and you see a nice cluster of bees that they're doing just fine. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one.